Hi everybody and welcome to James's House of Rock. Today we'll be talking about a band that I've liked since I was a little kid. Their name is Green Day. Formed in 1991 by singer-songwriter Billy Joe Armstrong and bassist Michael Pritchard, otherwise known as Mike Durnt, they were later joined by John Kiffmeyer. They, they were known as Sweet Children. Put into the punk rock kids of the area, they found their launching point at 924 Gilman Street. After many attempts at a gig, as soon as John Kiffmeyer got into the band, they were able to get a gig like that. They were, they were founded by, at a house party by, the, by Larry Livermore, the director of Lookout Records. They were later to release four EPs, the first one to be A Thousand Hours. And then... And later, they released a compilation of all four EPs called 1039 Smoothed Out Slappy Hours. After the release of the record, they went on a small club tour. Not their most successful, but of course it was a tour. And in 1992, they released Kerplunk, which scored them their first European tour. After Kaplunk, they left Lookout Records looking for a new record company. After many attempts at signing themselves, they finally decided to go with Reprise Records, which is a division of Warner Brothers Records. Later on, they released Dookie, arguably one of Green Day's most absolute famous CDs. This scored them five singles and lots of radio play. After that, they released the CD Insomniac, which has a lot of unknown songs, which means that everybody knows the song, just they don't know it's Green Day, including Brain, Stew, and Jaded. The record after that is Nimrod, one of, one of Green Day's most unappreciated albums, even though all of the songs are very well known, just again, nobody knows it's Green Day. After that, Green Day went into a bit of a hiatus because after Nimrod's very low success, they, they, their record company didn't want them to continue, but Billy Joe still wanted to. After the events of 9-11 and the election of Bush, Billy Joe's mind started thinking about politics, which then created 2004's album American Idiot, which put Green Day back in the spotlight, telling the story about this boy named Jesus of Suburbia finding his way in, in the big world. Again, Green, Green Day toured this album for five years until they made 21st Century Breakdown, which is a story about two lovers, Christian and Gloria, finding their way through the modern world apocalypse. After that, Green Day went into a bit of a rest, but this year they ended up, um, they ended up releasing three new CDs, Uno, Dos, and Trace. They each came out all in one year, and were very, had a lot of recognition. Here I've got a Green Day tour poster from Madison Square Garden, 1994, which would be about Dookie or Insomniac's time. Um, around the Dookie time, John Kiffmeyer went, went to college so they had to find a new drummer. Reprise Records gave them Trey Cool or Fredwin Wright. The band didn't like him at first because he was a young and a bit of a troublemaker, but he later grew into the Green Day family and has been with them ever since. And actually, the 2004 Green Day album, American Idiot, did so well that they recently just made a Broadway play off of it, which is going back on its fourth tour now, 
around North America. And later this year, in theaters and in a uh, DVD, they're releasing a documentary about making the Broadway musical called Broadway Idiot. Also, they made a documentary about Uno, Dos, and Trace called Quattro, which will be released this December with the Trace Deluxe package. Last night, I went to a the Rock Allegiance tour. This included All That Remains, H.I.M. or Him, and Volbeat. I actually got to go up on stage with Volbeat and high five them all and talk to them. I they asked all the kids to come up for the last song and I was like the only one that was really into it. I I went on stage, put up my hands like this, and the whole crowd went wild. It was a really good experience. And it was also, you could tell, a lot of people were there only for Volbeat because the other two bands played and the crowd was relatively quiet. I mean, you had some people that were fans of them. And then Volbeat came on and the place was packed. So, recently, yeah, recently Green Day played at the iHeartRadio Festival and Billy Joe Armstrong melted down at the ba the stage director and found himself at rehab canceling the tour for Uno Dos and Trace. They are currently back on tour. Yeah. We had tickets and we didn't get to go to the they were playing in Boston. Some of my favorite songs mostly the radio play songs, but Especially for American Idiot and 21st Century Breakdown, you have to listen to them all in order. So for all you, all you music lovers, you gotta pick up all of these CDs. So every week, or every two weeks, I'm gonna have a trivia question. You can respond to this trivia question at jameshouseofrock at gmail.com or the later to come website james'shouseofrock.weebly.com and we'll announce who the winner is every episode. Tonight's trivia question is what was the name of Billy Joe Armstrong's guitar that he got when he was 10 and still uses in the present day albums? This is a very hard question for anybody that's not a big fan of Green Day but an easy question to Google. Um, something else I forgot to talk about is a little bit of Billy Joe's past. He, his father died when he was very young of cancer, but before that, he, he was a singer since he was very little. When he was five, his piano teacher got him into a record label to record one song called Look for Love. That, which you can look up on YouTube. There were no official videos made for this, but of course, you can hear the song. Mike Dern's past was he was an orphan child because both of his parents died when he was very young, so he spent most of his time in foster homes or orphanage. And Billy Joe and Mike became friends when they were teenagers and decided to form Green Day. Oh. I got to see American Idiot, the Broadway musical, and I must say they did a very good job. For when it started, Billy Joe actually performed as the main Jesus of Suburbia, but as they started work on 21st Century Breakdown, another person was later casted, but he still, he still showed up at the end to perform um, Good Riddance, Time of Your Life, which is on Nimrod which is one of the very many songs that is played everywhere, but nobody knows it's Green Day. Yeah. I was really excited when I knew they were coming back with the trilogy, because I've, like I said, I've always been a big Green Day fan, and I thought that they wouldn't be coming back for a little while longer, but obviously they've been hard at work, and they still are. Some of my favorite songs off these albums 
I know I said this earlier, is, um, like, let yourself go and kill the DJ on Uno are two songs that one of them gets radio play, but I think they're very well done. For all you, um, smaller children or teenagers, you might want to ask your parents before you listen to them, because all of them contain explicit content. And some more than others. <laughs> um, some of my favorite songs off of the other ones is the nine and a half minute song that consisted of five 30 second mini songs called Homecoming. It is track tw 12 on American Idiot. It c what Billy Joe what Billy Joe challenged the band to do was was um, write 30 second songs. They each wrote one and then they they, at, they made a couple together. Mike Dirt sings one of the parts in both a song on 21st Century Breakdown and a part of Homecoming on American Idiot. Yeah. So this song Time of Your Life is like I said, a very unknown song to Green Day, even though it is played at all homecoming places and graduations and, like, we had it as a teacher retirement. They had the third grade sing it for our retiring science center teacher in elementary school, which I thought was kind of cool because I would never think that they'd, put, they'd have Green Day for something like that. Right now, Green Day is on, is in Australia touring. They probably are going to take a break after this and you might not see them for a couple more years but um they're going strong and they're they've been back in the spotlight since American Idiot they're very well known between the punk group and like I, I forgot to mention earlier that that place that they started in Gilman Street when they got big with Dookie they were actually rejected out of Gilman Street, they weren't ever allowed to play there again because the the city named them sellouts because of their huge success. But after Mike Dernst's side band, the Frustrators, came and played on there, Green Day started to get a bit more reputation and was later allowed to go back to their Gilman Street home, which felt good to the band. For the release of the trilogy, before it, Everybody, they didn't release it until they played five secret shows across California, which you could only find off of their blog or if you were a Idiot Nation member, which is their website uh, fan club. They played these secret shows, playing new material off of these three CDs, and then released it to the public that they were releasing them. Other side projects for, for the... Um, for Green Day is Billy Joe Arms, well the, actually the whole band wrapped, the, wrapped their faces up in duct tape and called themselves The Network, which released one CD called Money Money 2020, which is a very um, like hard to find CD. I've looked it up to buy it a couple times because I like a couple songs on there, but it's nowhere to be found. Another side project is the whole band put together a oh, jazz acoustic type of album under the name of the Foxborough Hut Tubs. That that band that C D was called Stop Drop and Roll. Um Mike uh Billy Joe and Trey Cool were also part of a band called The Lookouts. And when Billy Joe was a teenager he was part of Pinhead Gunpowder, which is a very old band at this point. Two comedy artists Weird Al and Richard Cheese have done plenty of parodies and covers off of all of these songs, including Weird Al's um, hit Canadian Idiot off of the title track of America. As for um, trivia questions, or you have any questions on any of the bands I cover, then also feel free to send an email or put it on the blog of the website. So Billy Joe's mom actually worked at a barbecue restaurant in the area where they lived. And when Billy Joe and Mike Dirt met, 
it started as just like a little jamming session with guitars and then they started writing lyrics and progressively on until they started playing at their friends' houses to very small cl crowds, which is how they got founded by Larry Livermore at a house party. Um, Mike Dirt never really had a family, which is very sad, except for like foster families, which is never really the same. Trey Cool is actually German. He's um he's from Germany and that's all. Yeah. Like I said before, Mike Dern's real name is Michael Pritchard. Billy Joe Armstrong hadn't changed his name and um Mike uh Trey Cool is really Fred Red Wright the third. Um just recently on the trilogy They've added a new member to um, Green Day, John White, which for sen which since American Idiot has been their backup guitarist, but is now an official member of Green Day. Now you can actually see them in the lyrics book. To um, you can see his name in the lyrics book as a guitar and backup vocals. Green Day's official website is GreenDay.com, obviously. And um, if you want to see who else is on their record label, you want to go to reprise.com. I've never actually seen Green Day in, in concert. Like I said before, mine was canceled. Um, but I'd absolutely love to. Some of the concerts I have been to, though, is Twins of Evil, which was Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie. Also, my very first concert, which was a surprise to me, was the Uproar Festival, which had Adelie's Way, Godsmack, Stained, Papa Roach was supposed to be there, but his, their drummer, their singer was sick, and Shinedown. Some of the smaller bands were In This Moment, P.O.D., and Deuce, which is from Hollywood Undead, which he left because he thought he could be way better, but obviously... <laughs> Hollywood Undead is way more famous than him right now. One of, one of the other concerts I've been to was Tenacious D, which is the famous actor Jack Black's band with KG. That was at the Boston House of Blues. Some of the bands coming into town soon are Event Sevenfold at TD Garden on October 17th. On October... 19th, you can come see Alice Cooper at the Lynn Memorial Auditorium. Thank you very much. I'd also, I also actually write and record my own music. I've been trying to work on some, work on imitating some of these s songs and have to Hope to have my own group someday that can be punk rock. Well, thank you, everybody, and I will be back um, every other week to talk about a different band. Thank you.